Hi, I'm Bob. Welcome to the Stata course on regression analysis and estimation methods. In this topic, we will have a look at the post estimation commands after the OLS regression. After we regress a model, we can use a variety of post estimation stata commands to get information of the estimation and perform the regression diagnostics, including marginal effects of explanatory variables, linear tests for parameter estimates, tests for heteroscedasticity, diagnostic plots, and many others. We will continue to use the course dataset BOB.DTA. Let me show you some of the commonly used post estimation commands. I will start with the predict command. After an OLS regression, we can use the predict command with the residuals option to obtain the OLS residuals and use the XB option to obtain the fitted values. Let's regress hourly wage on schooling, married, female, and age. Then we type predict read one comma residuals and we generate a new variable called red one containing the OLS residuals of the model. If we type predict xb1, comma, and the option xb, we will generate a new variable called xb1 containing the fit values or the linear predictions of the model. The residuals are the estimates of the model's error terms, and the fit values are the estimates of the true outcome variables. We can now summarize these new variables. The if e sample condition means we only apply the summarize command to the sample used in the last estimation. That is 4,164 observations. We find that the OLS residuals approximately sum up to zero. In other words, the sample mean of residuals is basically zero. The sample mean of the fit values of the outcome variable matches the sample mean of the true values. However, the standard deviation and the minimum and maximum predictions differ from the real values. Let's take a close look at the properties of the residuals and fit values and check whether some of the OLS assumptions are satisfied. One assumption is the homoscedasticity assumption. It states that the error term of the model has the same variance given any value of the explanatory variable. It implies that the variance of the residuals does not depend on the explanatory variables. Otherwise, the error term is said to exhibit heteroscedasticity. We can draw graphs to show whether the homoscedasticity assumption holds. The graph two-way is a general command in Stata to draw graphs. We can type graph two-way and put the specific graph commands inside the parentheses. We want to scatter the residuals against the fit values. We add the Y line option to show the horizontal line at zero. We also specify the marker size as tiny. Please refer to the Stata graphics and data visualization course for detailed information on drawing graphs. We find that the residuals are not randomly distributed along the zero line. 
and the variance of the residuals becomes larger as hourly wage increases. It suggests heteroscedasticity of the data. Stata provides a command called RVF plot to draw exactly the same graph without first generating the residuals and fitting values. The name of the command means residual versus fitting value plots. In addition to diagnostic plots, Stata has commands to test heteroscedasticity directly. The command ESTAT head test performs the BP test for heteroscedasticity. The null hypothesis is the constant variance of the error term. We have a large chi-square statistic and a tiny p-value, meaning that we reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity. In other words, we have evidence of heteroscedasticity in the model. We can further use the options right-hand side and multiple testing to let data do the test for each explanatory variable. We see that all explanatory variables contribute to heteroscedasticity. The heteroscedasticity could also be due to the specification of the model. We may consider using the log of hourly wage as the outcome variable in the future. Another assumption of OLS regression is that the error terms are normally distributed. We can use the k-density graph command to check whether the residuals are normally distributed. We type k-density, read 1, and the option normal to add normal density to the graph. The residuals do not look normally distributed. Finally, we may want to know how well the fit values fit the data. We can compare the two kernel density plots, one for the observed true values and the other for the fit values. We find that the fit values of hourly wage do not seem to fit the data very well. The real wage data has a long tail. The model does not fit the underlying data very well, but the OLS model is the starting point of any advanced specification strategies and estimation methods. Today, we have learned to generate the OLS residuals and the fit values after regression. We use the residuals and the fit values to draw graphs and perform the tests for homoscedasticity and normality assumptions. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you tomorrow on the next topic. Happy Lunar New Year. Take care. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.